Hello, and welcome back to my train tutorial series. We're going to look at uh, train blocks today. Uh, it's going to be a really short one just to introduce the idea of what a train block is. We have this really simple train network set up. Um, it's meant to model something like a train going to an ore patch and dumping ore back at a smelter. So we have two trains on this network. They're shuttling backwards and forwards between two train stops. If we go into the map, you can see the train stops are named Phobos and Deimos. We can toggle the train stop names on and off in the map view using this widget here. I like to have them switched on. And in the uh, game settings, in the UI settings, you can set up uh, how big those labels are and what angle they're at and things like that. It's all relatively configurable. So we're going to start these trains going. and see what they do. So the first train is on its way, second train is on its way, they're shuttling backs and forwards to their t between Phobos and Deimos. They're pausing for a little bit and then they're moving on. So we're going to let them do this for a, a few more runs around the wheel and see what happens. So this is the sort of thing that can happen if one train is longer than the other or if one of the trains, um, for example, is running on wood and the other one's running on rocket fuel the trains will run at different speeds around the track. Okay, and do you see what happened there? Right, the one train ran into the other train. This can be quite serious. If your trains are very heavy, they will literally obliterate one another. Um, here, they're, they're light enough that it's not a huge problem. All right, so what's going on? Well, the logic in Factorio for train scheduling is that a a train looks for the station it needs to go to. It then finds a route through the tracks which will get it there. And then it tries to go. What can prevent it going? Well, it could have no route, or the train station could not be accepting trains. But assuming there is a route and trains are accepted, uh, the, the station is accepting trains, it's going to start to drive towards the train station. Except here, we have another train in the way. So it's just bumping into the thing. Uh, luckily, we have some house bots which are uh, repairing, um, but this will just go on forever. And it, you know, it's not a good look, is it? So this is where um, signals come in. So if we get a rail signal, uh, you can probably see that the entire rail network is now highlighted in a single line of cyan. Okay. So what I can do is put down a signal before and after one of the stations. We'll let this crash in, but then you can see what happens. Now, you can see that the station is now highlighted in a um, different color, magenta. The other train comes along, and instead of running into the train, sorry, I just got stuck there, it, it waits at this signal. Um, I shouldn't have hidden this signal. Let's move that out of the way so you can see, okay? and then it would go on. However, this train is occupying the magenta area, and this train is occupying the cyan area. And the rules for trains are they will not enter a colored area if another train is already in the area. So let's get the wording correct here. It's about whether the train will enter the area. If the train is already in the area, it doesn't check it. So if, uh, when we started out, we had two trains in the Cyan area. They were just driving because they were already in it. Now that we've put down a couple of signals to break the track up into two areas, a Magenta and a Cyan, there's a train in the Magenta, there's a train in the Cyan. Neither train can move into a block which is unoccupied, so neither train is moving. So if I put down literally any other signal. Let's put it down here. Okay, so now this train will move into the block here. Then it will move into the yellow block now that this has vacated the yellow block. This moves into the um, cyan block, right? Then this, after it's had its pause, will move into the 
the gen sorry into this cyan block from the yellow block and so on and so on okay so we have three blocks and two trains so it's not working very well but if we add in some extra signals we have now broken this up into multiple blocks okay you can see there's uh, one two three four five six blocks by my count so now the trains can make some progress because they can look ahead one block drive through that block and continue doing that until there's a train occupying a block they need to get into so what we'll see is that the faster train, the train which pauses less, that one paused at the bottom for this to leave the block with the station in. And we'll see the same thing at the top. So this is waiting, this will be leaving soon, but not yet. This train hasn't left, so this paused that signal very slow, very slightly. Okay. So these trains are set up to be four units long. So they're one uh, engine and three cargo wagons. Um, and that is important. So if, if I hold this, you can see there is a, um, a guide which shows four white boxes and that's four white carriages. That's long enough to fit that train into. Similarly, this area here is longer than four wagons. It's six. This is longer than four wagons. In fact, it is four wagons. So there's room to fit a train in here and so on, right? So it's quite important when you're breaking up your track into blocks that the blocks are longer than the trains you're gonna have in there so that a train can entirely fit within an area marked out by a, a signal. And that's it for simple signaling. So uh, the only other thing I want to mention is that all the train track decorations, signals and um, train stops and so forth, that they all have a side of the track that they are on, uh, which will become more important when we talk about uh, dual direction tracks, but also when we talk about um, uh, pairs of tracks. So the... Um, Decorations are always to the right in the direction of travel, and that's the only way I can ever remember it. I have the mouse that I play Factorio with on the right, and uh, that's how I remember that wherever I put these things, it's going to be on the right-hand side if you are sat in the um, forward direction of travel. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so, so quite often you will get situations where you think you have um, signaled a piece of track and you had a um, station there and you're a bit confused and the reason is you've put the signal on the wrong side of the track and you can see here the signal is uh, marking out a piece of uh, directionality headed downwards but the station is marking out directionality facing upwards and that that makes things very confused uh, you'll get uh, unreachable path type errors, which are just a bit baffling sometimes. But you can see how we've broken up this uh, train track, which was causing crashes into one where the trains move, purely by breaking up the track into multiple segments, okay? And uh, I, I believe Factorio uses four colors for these segments. There is a mathematical theorem called the four color theorem and it turns out that for most um, most situations like this where you have a series of uh, extents which are joined together and you need to color each one a, di a color different from its neighbors that you need four distinct colors to be able to tile them when you're tiling them on a plane. So the factory of devs are cultured and know these things. Um, so yeah, you'll see those four colors we, we have seen uh, during the demo today. That's it. Um, we'll talk about more advanced signaling uh, next time, probably something about how to use uh, chain signals and how to signal junctions. Uh, but until then, thanks very much for watching. Like, subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.